Good morning. Oh, come on, guys. Good morning. Moloeni. Dumelang. Huye Mora. San Monan. And of course, my favorite South African greeting, Nda. Ah, I think it's just a cold greeting. <laughs> my name is Max Moyo of the Moyo clan of the Rosary Kingdom. We are the original custodians of what you now know as the great Zimbabwe ruins. And I've often said that if the Moyo clan were to come back together again, we would be the largest monarch in Southern Africa. And so you find the Moyos predominantly in Zimbabwe, you find the Lozis in Zambia, and the Barotse in Botswana. Now, these three groupings used to form what was then known as the Rosary Kingdom. And what you know as the Zimbabwe ruins was actually a palace for our king. I am also the son of Ham, the son of Noah, the son of Methuselah, the son of Seth, the son of Adam and Eve. Normally when I get to this point, people don't know whether to say amen or not. <laughs> but I introduce myself the way I do, firstly, because I'm African. And as you know, it is African tradition that you have not earned the right to speak to people until you have formally introduced yourself. Secondly, and maybe most importantly, I introduce myself the way I do because ultimately in life, who you are will determine what you do with your life. Who you are determines what you do and what you don't do. And so if you don't know who you are, you are going to look for identity in two things. Either a position and or possessions. The story of our lives. We wake up every morning, we rush off to work in search of two things. Position and possession. And of course, if you're fortunate enough that your boss tells you you are not management material, you accept this that you are never going to get the position, but oh, you are so going to get the possessions. Ah, are you ready for me? So buckle up. It's going to be a rough ride. You are either going to be inspired by what, by what I'm going to say, or you are going to be irritated. Either way, I'm happy. If you're inspired, you're thinking about what I've said. If you're irritated, you're still thinking about what I've said. So we are okay. I thought that today I'm going to speak to you about, the which is the title of my new book, The Leadership Call. The Leadership what? The Leadership Call. I don't think there's ever been a time in history where the world needed leaders to stand up like now. I mean, there's no country where there's no drama. There's no company where there's no drama. There's no family where there's no drama. It seems like we are, we're in a, in, there's an upheaval going on, and this is driven largely by a lack of leadership because people are quite happy to sit back and say, somebody needs to do something about this. So I'm going to challenge you, and I'm going to take you through what really makes a leader. Um, I've, got, I've got a couple of my books with me. So, you know, after this, look for me. Just look for that dark guy. It's probably the darkest guy in the group. Look for me. I'll be, I'll be at the back there. You can get a copy of that. If you, don't worry. If you don't have cash, I have one of those uh, fancy things. All right, so how many of us here are leaders? Let me see hands. Of course, now the hands are going to go up because. <laughs> now, in, in my book, I talk about the fact that we've got CEOs and we've got prime ministers, we've got presidents, we've got ministers, we've got uh, CEOs and, 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 and general managers who are not leaders. And then we have people who have no positions who are actually leaders. Most of us know those people, right? In fact, my book is dedicated to all the mothers, and rightly so, because our first experience of leaders is actually our mothers. They lead our homes, isn't it? Now, a lot of us associate leadership with what? With position, isn't it? But leadership has got absolutely nothing to do with position. And I'm going to show you now as I take you through the steps of leadership. Because it's easy to talk about leadership, but what is that? What are those steps that lead us to leadership? Can we get started now? There are 8 billion people on planet Earth today. How many? 8 
billion people, and yet not a single individual like you. Right now, where you are sitting, you are one out of eight billion. A unique phenomena, never ever to be repeated again. In fact, even your own government recognizes your uniqueness. So the day you were born, the doctors looked at you and thought, my, my, my. We have never seen a human being like this one before. So they called the guys from Home Affairs. They came and looked at They agreed. So they gave you an ID number. Not something that's very interesting. Your identity number has never, ever been used before you. Meaning, there has never been a human being like you before you. Two, your ID number is not being used by anybody as we speak, unless, of course, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Meaning, there is no human being like you. Thirdly, when you finally pick up and go, I know some of you think you're going to live forever, that you are going to die. Hello? When you die, your ID number will never, ever be used again. Meaning, there will never be another human being like you again. So you, my friend, are it. In my time, MC Hammer would have said, can't touch this. <laughs> now, how many of you woke up this morning, looked in the mirror while you were dressing for this conference and thought, mm -mm -mm, can't touch this? I'm fascinated by the fact that, you know, in spite of our uniqueness, that most of us will spend our lives trying to be somebody else. And the problem with trying to be somebody else, you've already failed before you start. Let me show you. So the first thing that makes you unique from everybody else is your identity. What's the shortcut for identity? ID, write this down. ID stands for irresistible difference. Mm, that's a quotable quote. So when you buy the book, you can read more about that. So when I say you, you have a unique identity, I am not talking about the fact that you are Zulu. In fact, let's talk about this for a moment. I mean, the fact, so I'm Max Moyo of the Moyo clan, blah, blah, blah. So what? You see, we tend to brag about these things that we use. So what? So what? I am the president. So what? See, there's a whole lot of things that we brag about that we've made our identity, which mean absolutely. I was so glad Jeremy didn't read the whole thing. You know, people like always call me, give us a, 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 a short. I say, no, just tell them it's Max Moyer. What I've done before this meeting today does not matter. What organizations I worked for, what positions I held, whatever money I've made, whatever Im impact I've ever had in life means absolutely. If I don't touch your life in the next 20 or 30 minutes that I'm going to be here, this would have been a waste of your life. Hello? So the first thing that we get then is that you were born with a unique what? Irresistible difference. Mm, I love that. So let me describe your resistance difference to you. See, now, they give me a little time. I'm African. You know, I take 30 minutes just to introduce myself. But <laughs> I'm going to adjust to this, Jeremy. <laughs> In your families, you have a family member who's a peacemaker, right? All families have got one. Unless your family doesn't fight, in which case there's no love in your family. Because, you know, you need two things for a fight. You need love and you need growth. It's a formula for a fight. But it's a good fight. So now, the peacemaker in your family, did they go to UCT to study peacemaking? Are you sure? Isn't that interesting? Didn't they say you need to go to school in order to be somebody? Oh, come on. Some of you told your kids this morning, Mommy, why should I go to school so you can be somebody someday? I get, this, I get these emails. Dear Mr. Moyo, please, I want you to help me to ignite my potential so I can be somebody someday. And of course, typical me, I respond, Dear Mosquito, I mean, you want to be somebody someday. What are you now? You see, it's very important to understand that you are somebody right now. Your ability to be impactful 
is, is rooted in your being. Somebody. You go to school because you're somebody. You go to work because you're somebody. Are you, are you with me? So now what we find is that the, the peacemaker in your family was born with a unique, irresistible difference of bringing about peace. So wherever they go, there is peace. And the reason why we have so much conflict in the world is because the peacemakers, those who were born to be peacemakers, are busy trying to make a living as accountants or doctors or nurses. Now they're about to kill the patients because I hate what I do, but it pays the rent. Hello, can I talk to somebody now? I'm going to get into your business now. The average working person wakes up every morning to go, number one, to a job they hate. Number two, a boss they cannot stand. Number three, they're afraid of losing the job they hate. No wonder you got high blood pressure. <laughs> Come on, man, you hate your job, can't stand your boss, but you're afraid of losing the job you hate. It is time that we came face to face with ourselves. The peacemaker in your family should have been making a living as a conflict resolve, resolver. Are you still with me? Here's a question for you this morning. What is your unique, irresistible difference? Until you can answer that question, you are never going to find your rightful place in the world. Everybody was born a success. We spend our lives trying to fail. Number two, I've got to move faster now because Jeremy is looking at me. The second thing that makes you different from everybody else is your talents. There are no two people in the world with the same set of talents in the same proportion. So right now where you are sitting, you possess a set of talents that no one else on planet Earth has, has got. Oh, let me go a little deeper with this. Who you are determines how much money you will ever make in your life. Notice I didn't say what you studied. It's who you are. Let me prove it to you. If you have a unique, irresistible difference, in other words, the capacity and the ability to be the difference wherever you go, plus you have a unique set of talents. Now stay with me, please. If you have a set of talents that no one else in the world has got, it follows that should you harness these talents, develop those talents, deploy those talents, there is something in this world that only you can do better than anyone else. Woo! And if you are the only person who can do what you can do like you can do, hello, the world will pay top dollar for what you can do. So why are you broke? You are broke because you don't know who you are. Hello? So the issue is not education. There's a lot of broke, educated people. In fact, Steve Jobs had standard 10. The richest guy in the world, Gates, standard 10. Most of you here sitting here have got degrees. I know more broke MBAs. <laughs> no, let's go for PhDs. They are called professors. They're at the university. They are broke. It's not the African National Congress that's the problem. It's you. You're not ready for me. Okay, let's move with this. So you possess a set of talents. So now here's the second question. What are your unique talents? If you don't know, then that's, that's where you go. Go figure out what you have. One of, the, one of the brilliant books I've ever read is called Now Discover Your Strength by Marcus Buckingham. Go read that book. Figure out what you have. Figure out what your, you possess. Because if you don't know your tools, your assets, you're never going to succeed. You're going to spend the rest of your life thinking that you are doff. And one of the things, I mean, people say education. I mean, between education and the workplace, we mess up more people than we build people. Hello? I mean, you went to school, couldn't remember Pythagoras' theorem, so they said you are doff. You remember that? But you see, mathematics or science is not a, science of, a sign of intelligence. I was speaking at the Million Dollar Round Table in Philadelphia. 8,600 million millionaires in one room. I was the only guy there who was not a millionaire. I look at these millionaires and I say to them, you know, I hear that Einstein was the most intelligent person that has ever lived. But I don't agree. I say, why? 
I said, because the only reason why Einstein is considered the most intelligent person that has ever lived is because I wasn't born. And by extension, it's because you are not born. Why am I saying that? Einstein himself said, I'm not the int most intelligent person that's ever lived. Why Einstein? He says, because if you measure a fish by his ability to climb trees, he will spend the rest of his life thinking he is dumb. How many times have they told you that you're not good enough? They tell you you're not good enough at school. They tell you you're not good enough at work. You remember performance appraisal? Now, today I came to tell you that you need to delete everything they've ever said about you. Unless your boss or your teacher, former teacher or former boss, his name is God, you have no business believing what they tell you. I'm 52 years old. I'm still looking for opportunity to use the value of pi. You remember pi? Oh, come on, now they say you're dope because you don't know mathematics. But I'm 52 years old, never had to use pi. I'm happy to be dumb because I don't know pi. You see, intelligence is a man or a woman who has walked into that which they were born to do. We were all born geniuses. You see, the guys at the back, they are connecting to some machine somewhere, and through the cables, voila. What do you get? Imagine they try to tune into KFM on the same projector. What happens? The projector stops being a brilliant piece of mach machinery and becomes a useless piece of junk. You've got to use everything for what it was created for. So that's the third thing that makes you unique from everybody else. Purpose. Reason for existence. The scholars will say, what were you created to do? So look at this now. Embrace your unique identity or your irresistible difference. Harness your unique talents in pursuit of your unique purpose and you get success. I call it the tripartite alliance of success. It's not the ANC, Communist Party, and COSATI. The tripartite alliance of success is what? Identity, talents, and? Now, let's go down. If you are a victim of apartheid, do you have a unique identity? Hello? Do you have a unique set of talents and gifts? Do you have a unique purpose? So apartheid is not your problem, is it? If you couldn't go to school because your parents couldn't afford, do you have a unique identity? Do you have a unique set of talents and gifts? Do you have a unique purpose? So you have no excuse for your lack of success. I begin to get the picture. If you are abused as a child, do you have a unique identity? Do you have a unique talents and gifts? Do you have a unique purpose? I came to set you free. Everything else is an excuse. You are born already equipped to be the best that they can ever be. But if you don't explore who you are, someone else is going to tell you who you are. The title of my first book is actually Become Yourself. Who are you? Your identity, talents, and purpose. Everything else doesn't matter. You're not an African. You're not a European. You're not a man. You're not a woman. You are identity, talents, and purpose. In other words, you are the difference that you make. And as soon as you stop making a difference, you're as good as non-existent. And if you never figure out your purpose, because I'm told that most people die at the age of 25. You know 25? Your father says, son, you're old enough now. It's time you make this woman, you make an honest woman out of her. Get married, get some kids, get a bond, and suffer like the rest of us. And so you accept this, and you got married, you got a bond, you got a job, and now you and your dad can have a common conversation. And so from the age of 25, you've been repeating the same year over and over again. Nothing has ever changed. You are doing exactly the same thing. Some of you have even stopped doing <laughs> New Year's resolutions because you know it's a waste of time. And if you continue with your life the way it is, this is how your tombstone is going to read. Here lies Max Moyo, died at 25, 
and was buried at 85. Because right now, all you are doing is going through the motions of life, waiting to die. I came to challenge you. Some of you say, you know, you know how these men, they can never give you business, they ignore you. No, man. Oh, you know these white people, you know, they're so racist, they ignore you. Man, I make more money from white folks than you, duckies. <laughs> so if they're ignoring you, that's your problem, not mine. I've learned one thing. As soon as you begin to make a difference, Nobody can ignore you. Let me give you a classical example. When you walk, when you go to a mango tree, what are you looking for? When there are no mangoes, you sit there and admire how the branches and the leaves. If people are ignoring you, they're ignoring you because you have no fruit. Start bearing fruit. And we'll come and find you. They didn't invite me to come and speak here because they're trying to do some ducky a favor. No, I need you to get this. I didn't go to the U.S. to speak because they just, you know, we've never had an African. I was the first African to speak at the Million Dollar Roundtable in its 85-year history. They were not doing it for affirmative action. They were doing it because I have something to give that nobody in the world has got to give. What am I trying to say to you? I come from Zim, where we have one of the... Seven natural wonders of the world. It's called Victoria Falls. Big Falls is one out of seven. You, my friend, is one out of eight billion. Statistically, you are more unique and more rare than Victoria Falls. You, my friend, are the eighth wonder of this world. That's the title of my second book, by the way. I need you to see yourself for who you are. You see, the reason why the world was created before you, it was so that, you, you, know, you know, when you happen to something, you impact that thing. When it happens to you, it impacts you. Oh, I wish you could get this. You have so much to do. It's about time you start setting yourself free. Now, I love this. I mean, I think we needed apartheid so we can have a Mandela. Hello? You can't, you can't stomach that, right? Without apartheid, there would be no Mandela. We would have never known that guy. So let me go quickly because I want to talk to you about your pain and I'm going to leave you alone. Right. So first step in terms of leadership is what? Embracing your unique identity. Second step then is what? Harnessing your unique talents. The third thing then is embracing your purpose. It is your purpose then that will generate what I call step number four, conviction. Leaders are men and women of conviction. Listen to Nelson Mandela. He says it's an ideal that I hope to live for. But wait for it. But if necessary, to die for. So, my fellow young leaders, what are you willing to die for? Because until you are ready to die, you're not ready to live. Leaders are men and women of conviction. They stand by what they stand for. Even if it means getting fired, ask Praveen Gordon. We're going somewhere. Oh, God. Not these guys who go with the wind. Eh? Today they are worshipping this side, tomorrow. No, no, no. Leaders stand for what they believe, even if it means death. You want to lead, you must be prepared for pain. Step number five. Your conviction is what generates vision. Vision. What is your vision for your life? Not just for your life. See, my vision is very simple. A world of eight billion people who embrace their unique identity, harness their unique talents in pursuit of a life of purpose. When that has happened, I can die in peace. Because those who have lived a life of purpose look forward to dying. The rest who have made a mess like Mugabe keep saying, I need more time. We'll talk about that some other time. Right. Vision. Vision. Step number six. Your vision, then, is what generates your passion. Look at the way I speak. I speak with passion. They're not paying me for this. I'm not getting paid. But do I speak like, well, they didn't pay me. I'm going to give them half a loaf? No. The passion with which I speak is driven by my vision. By speaking to you, I'm getting closer and closer to my vision of 8 billion people who embrace their uniqueness and are living a life of purpose. What is your passion? 
what drives your passion? Man, if you make it about money, you will never succeed. I'm going to repeat this to you. Don't chase after money because money will always be ahead of you. Do something that will cause the money to chase after you. Seven, it is your passion then that then leads to inspiration. Step number seven, leaders inspire others. Are you, are you with me? So if you tell me you're a leader, what is your inspiration? Now, I want to give you a, a classical example, right? During the struggle years, people left the country and went overseas, or what, Russia, whatever, to go and train to come and fight. How much were they getting paid? Hello? Not a single cent. They were willing to give their lives. Why? They were driven by a vision, and that vision has inspired them to go and do that. Now we get people that are getting paid salaries, and they're not doing their job. The issue has never been money. The issue has always been vision and inspiration. Inspiration. It is your inspiration that leads you to step number, where are we now? Hey, someone says eight, somebody says seven. Which way is it? This is step number eight, which is influence. Now, not something. You don't work for me. I'll never, I'm not, I have no influence on what happens in your life. And yet, when you leave this place, you're going to do the stuff I talk to you about. That's influence. That's influence. I have millions of people around the world who are doing stuff that I've talked to them about. And yet, I don't have a position. I don't pay their salaries. I have absolutely, they are do it, willingly giving up their own to follow. That, my friends, is leadership. Leadership is when people give up their own vision and ideas to follow you. By choice. Now, influence is interesting because, you see, in my book, I, I, I contrast the two. Influence and power. Which one would you choose? Most of you think, Max, I, if I only I had power, I would change this country. You don't need power to change a country. You need influence. Let me show you this. Power is a zero-sum game. Whenever you give your power away, you become less powerful. But influence is the opposite. Influence works by multiplication. If I share my influence with you, I become more influential. Most of the most influential people in the world have never held positions of power. When Mandela was in prison, he was influential. Without an army, with, without a position, just a prisoner in a jail. What is your influence? Now, let me go quickly so I can, I can go see. How much time do I have? Do I have time or am I done? Am I done? Okay, give me 10 minutes. I just need to finish this quickly. I, 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 you know, it'll help you with the rest of your day. Now, it's easy to want leadership. But let me tell you something. Let me describe leadership to you. Leadership is pain. Hello? If your leadership does not cause pain, it is not leadership. Let me go a little deeper. Leadership is brutal. Hello? Leadership is what? If you are not bleeding, you are not leading because leadership is leadership. Let's go quickly. Number one, growth is equals to? So question, when you leave this place after the whole day, Jeremy says 5.30, the question you need to ask yourself, what do I need to change in order for my 2018 to be a different year? In terms of three things, my thinking, my time, and my relationships. Two, change is equals to loss. Do you agree with me? What do I need to lose in order to progress in my life? She, he talks about Cheryl who, who deletes some people. I agree 100%. You see, for you who are entrepreneurs, if you want to make 5 million rands this year, then one of the things you need to do is disconnect from people who are not making 5 million rands. Hello? Then connect to people who want to make 5 million rands. And connect to people who are making 5 million rands. Does it make sense? Loss is equals to pain. Question. What pain am I prepared to go through to get my 5 million? Because most of you like the big goals. And when the pain comes, you say, no, uh -uh, no, this is too much. What pain are you prepared to go through? And of course, you remember math class, therefore... 
Growth is equals to? If you make your life about avoiding pain, you make your life about avoiding, no, about avoiding growth. And if you're not growing, you are dying. Finally, what is this pain? The P in pain stands for preparation. If you're going to run the, the Comrades Marathon, you're going to have to start by pre preparing. So if you're like me and fit, you're going to wake up in the morning, ride five, run 500 meters, and go, oh, oh, that part of the prep preparation is painful, isn't it? Yeah. But as I go every day, every day, what's going to happen? You're going to get better and better and better at it. When you've done your preparation, then you must what? Align yourself. If you're not aligned, you're not going to make progress. So if, if for instance, if, um, if I'm in the financial services industry, I need to align myself with the rules of operating in the financial services industry. If I live in South Africa, I've got to align myself with the rules of operating. Again, the picture. When you're aligned, then you get what I call, you see what happens when you're not aligned. They've got a bridge like that in Cape Town, by the way. Alignment leads to industry. Industry. I love this because, you see, these guys with that boat, or whatever, the canoe, or whatever they call it, white people do strange things. But anyway. <laughs> now, if, this, if one of these guys is not aligned, what's going to happen? That canoe is not going to go straight. It's going to go in there. So they have to be aligned in order to get industry or productivity. And of course, once you've, once you've got pro productivity, what happens? I love this. Everything in life wishes to reward what? You want to make money, you must contribute. Because alignment leads to your net worth. Your net worth is always for preparation, alignment, industry, then you get network, net worth. Otherwise, go get a tender. But that's another story. I want to close on this point. You will be the same five years from today, except for two things. The books you read, and the people you meet. One of the biggest challenges we face in this country is that we don't read. Statist last statistic I saw is 5% of South Africans buy books and only 3% read. So now you are trying to run a business. Your mind can't do this because you are squeezing a dry sponge. You've got to get this thing into something so that you can be creative. As a minimum, you should be reading a book a month. But if you run your own business, you better, you better up that. I read a book a week, sometimes three, sometimes four. My challenge between October this year and October next year is to read 400 books. That's eight books a month, a week. You can't be an international speaker when you don't read. It won't be long before they won't pay you for it. You are never going to succeed in your area if you don't read. So you're going to start by buying my books. <laughs> and, start, and, and Jeremy's book. Yes, you need to. You, if you walk out of there without buying some books and all this material that you're gaining today, use it. Read something every day. Meet somebody new. So here's uh, Jeremy's talk about that, and I'll close on this point. I close like a pastor. <laughs> Most of you are sitting next to someone you know. What a waste of life. And that's why, now listen to me carefully, that's why some of you, while Tabo was speaking earlier on, you were busy talking to each other. That's one of the things about sitting next to someone you know. Now let me tell you something. You know this person, you probably work together. There's nothing new they're going to add to your life. You came here to stretch yourself. So here's my challenge. Think about the best friend you have. Your best friend, you probably met, met them at school. You know, they, they drop your parents, drop your school, new school. You didn't know anybody, you know, if you're lucky. With us, they just said, follow the other kids. <laughs> so you get to the new school, and you know nobody. Do you walk to the person who seems to know what they're doing? No. We go to a person who looks as lost as we are, isn't it? <laughs> then you say, Eta, but say. And they started a relationship of losers that has lasted a lifetime. In my book, I ask that question. Make a list of all your friends and answer this question. Why, what criteria did you use to choose your friends? You find you don't share the same values. You, because, you're, you know, you see. Now, some of you came here this morning and you didn't know where to go. Did you ask somebody who seems to know where they're going? If you came here and you didn't have a friend, you probably looked for 
someone you know. If you didn't see anybody, then you looked for someone who looks like you. So there will be a darkie like you. And then you looked at a darkie who looked lost. And now you are sitting together as the lost. So here's my challenge. Networking. When you get up from here, go to the person who makes you the most uncomfortable. And then go and greet him. Hi, I'm Max. When we come back after the break, whatever the break, when you come back, sit next to someone new you've just met. And then make this a habit of your life. If you do that, you're going to expand your circle of friends. And you're going to be very deliberate about who becomes your friend. Because if you've got five friends and four of them are broke, you're the fifth broke person. I wish you the best as you explore the uniqueness of who you are and as you begin to live a life of purpose. If you don't, I close like this. Atamaxosa. Wazalwa. Waja. Wafa. You were born, you ate, and you died. Thank you very much.